Hi, this is Yeshua said my name again. What do beehives and a pine cone have to do with Vatican City? As a matter of fact, what do beehives and pine cones have to do with the occult or the esoteric? Let's find out. There in the court and one of the courts of the Vatican, there is uh, a pine cone. It's called the Court of the Pine Cone. And let me see if I can find this for you. And it's very esoteric. As a matter of fact, I'm getting um, this one source about uh, bees and beehives and uh, its ties to the occult um, and esoteric meanings uh, from a website called humansarefree.com. Um, I don't endorse this website uh, for you to do uh, most of your research on because this website is not connected with anything godly, mostly. I just wanted to uh, bring you something from a secular a secular source. And sometimes I do that to prove a point that I'm not just pulling all of my sources from Christian sources. Um, this is from humansarefree.com. And what it's showing here from, and this is, this is supposedly coming from a secular ungodly source. And what this man did is he went to the Vatican and he exposed the esoteric symbols in Vatican City. And this is the beginning of his article. And what he's doing here is he, uh, He's exposing the Vatican uh, City's esoteric uh, symbols. And he says it's esoteric beyond belief. He starts here, Vatican City, State, and Rome, together with London, Washington, D.C., and Paris, are the most important capitals of the so-called elite. I've had the opportunity to visit the Vatican and Rome this month, and I could not believe how openly displayed their control is. I took thousands of pictures, and though I cannot share all of them with you, I will choose some of the most interesting and explain the esoteric significance of the symbolism. You will notice that a relatively small number of symbols are obsessively displayed in all their temples, churches, and public squares. Uh, and let me get on down to the, um, uh, the beehive here and, and the, the symbols of the bees that are in the Vatican. And I'm going to go on to you what the B symbol stands for as far as the occult and the esoteric. Okay, there's a, a picture here of a honeycomb on the ceiling here of, of the Vatican. So this man went down into the, the belly of the Vatican and he, he took pictures of the ceiling here. And he goes on to say what this is. The symbolism of the honeycomb, the house of the royal families, is present on most ceilings of the temples of the elite. It is a hard statement, meaning this was built by us and belongs to us. So it's a honeycomb architecture of the ceiling representing the house of the bees or the royal family. The beehive represents the exterior of the royal temples. The honeycomb is always depicted inside the beehive, hence the representing of the interior. The bees symbolize the royal families. But I want to go on to say that there's other meanings about the bees. Um, that are uh, that have occult or esoteric meanings, and even back to um, Egyptian staffs and pharaohs and, and other types of um, pagan gods that held staffs that would have the pine cone on it, representing the pineal gland. Okay, a pineal gland is the gland that's found in the brain that most referred to as the third eye. That's where you get the all-seeing eye from, the back of the dollar bill. That's where in Buddhism. Um, you'll notice that uh, the Buddha statues have that, that eye right here, which represents the pineal gland. And the pineal gland looks like a pine cone. So when you see uh, the pine cone in the Vatican, and, and we're going to get to that in a minute, it represents wisdom or that third eye. Uh, but getting back to the bees again, uh, it's in the Vatican, in the catacomb area, this man went down and took a picture of these bees down there surrounded, I guess, by these, these children or, or these cherubs or something. So what is it with the Vatican and, and the bees? Um, and this isn't the only place apparently found in the Vatican with bees. There's other places in the Vatican catacombs that he took pictures of where bees are symbolized. So what does this have to do with anything godly? And remember, this man from this uh, website here, he's not this isn't this humans are free website is not a christian website this is a secular website and this man ex went to vatican city explicitly to expose the esoteric in the vatican and in vatican city itself so getting on to the pine cone imagery here remember i told you that there's a um that there's a um a courtyard in the vatican in vatican city called the you know the, the court of the pine cone and let me show you a picture of that 
really quickly. <clears throat> but apparently bees in esoteric uh, represent wisdom, accomplishment, working hard. Um, but if you look, if you type in bees and um, the esoteric and the occult, you'll be amazed what you come up with there. And, and I'm going to get into that more in just a moment. Uh, the pineal gland in the occult is represented by a pine cone symbol. And I'm going to get, um, th this is a Christian source that I'm getting this from called uh, bibliotechlepage.net. So I'll show you that up close so you can get that link in case you want to look at about the pineal gland and the pine cone. And the reason I'm bringing this up about the bees uh, being heavily associated with the Vatican and the pine cone is because, remember, all throughout this channel, I've been exposing a lot of the occult, the craft, Freemasonry, the esoteric that's involved in, in the Vatican or in Catholicism. It says here, the pine cone symbol is one of the most mysterious emblems found in ancient and modern art architecture. Few scholars realize it, but the pine cone alludes to the highest degree of spiritual illumination possible. This was recognized by various ancient cultures, and the symbol can be found in the ruins of the Indonesians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, to name a few. It also appears in the drawings of esoteric traditions like Freemasonry, Theosophy, Gnosticism, and esoteric Christianity, which is not born-again Christianity. The pine cone held the same meaning for all. It symbolized a secret organ or the pineal gland of the third eye that we all possess. So the pineal gland in the brain is what they're referring to here, and it looks like a little pine cone. And this is where, um, you know, the occult and, and um, the New Age movement um, ever, I mean, I mean, Ecclesiastes says that there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. And I mean, this was all through these civilizations, the Indonesians, Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, and so on, representing the third eye. So when you look on the back of your dollar bill, um, and I'm going to do a video very soon about uh, pyramids, uh, because in um, Freemasonry, you know, and, and the occult, they call it sacred uh, geometry. Uh, is very important to them. But there's a difference between a right side up pyramid and an upside down pyramid. Well, on the back of our dollar bill, the pyramid uh, has an all seeing eye and this represents the third eye or the eye of illumination. Um, getting onto it here, it says here, uh, all right, and here's the pine cone actually above built by the Romans, this first century Roman bronze sculpture called the pina or pine cone was once an ancient fountain. This pina sculpture sits in a Vatican courtyard called the Court of the Pine Cone and is today considered the largest pine cone statue in the world. So let me show this to you. So this is actually in Vatican City um, and it's called the Court of the, the Pine Cone and it's representing the pineal gland. If you look it up, that's what it's about. Goes on to say the pina sculpture, yeah, okay, sits in the Vatican courtyard called the Court of the Pine Cone. And down below, there's another picture here showing it says a pine cone staff of Osiris, Egyptian Museum, Turin, Italy, uh, 1224 BC. So here's that pine cone again, and it was uh, the staff of Osiris, and you can see that there. Okay, there's that pine cone again. And of course, in Egyptian and Babylonian mythology, that pineal gland that looks like a pine cone represents the third eye. All right. To answer, it says the third eye or the pineal gland. The answer to this is that pine cones throughout history have symbolized the pineal gland of the third eye and by association, the esoteric act of awakening it. So a lot of times when people sit in these yoga classes and they, you know, they do the mm thing and they're, and they're, you know, empty your mind and, you know, they're trying to awaken that, what they call the third eye. So yoga, in my opinion, is nothing innocent. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want nothing to do with it, but that's just my personal decision with the Lord. But the pineal gland, it shows you where it's located in the brain. Um, the pineal gland is shaped like a tiny pine cone and it shows you where it's located in the brain. If you can see that. And it looks like a little pine cone. This is where they get that terminology, the third eye. And where Satan has been telling people for a long time, this is where you can connect with your inner divine or find the light within. Okay. Um, in a lot of Hollywood symbology, like, you know, in front of magazines and movies and everything, you'll see people going, you know, going like this. Um, a woman's hair will cover a part of her face and it shows one eye or a lot of people going like this. This is to symbolize that pineal gland or that third eye. 
So these bees that are pictured in Vatican City in the catacombs uh, represent wisdom as well. And I have a website that I'm going to read to you from exactly what the B stands for as far as the occult and, and, um, and the esoteric. The Cadacious Staff, carried by Hermes in Greek mythology in ancient Rome, is depicted in the left hand of Mercury, right, a visual representation of the practice of the Kundalini Yoga, the ultimate goal of which is to awaken the third eye hidden in the human forehead. So the Cadacious Staff, and of course you'll recognize it is representing a lot of our medicine today. That symbol for medicine, notice the Cadacious Staff, and that's wrought by serpents, which we know is satanic. All right, to awaken the third eye, the Kudalini energy must be summoned to the forehead where it expands and thus awakens the third eye. The energy is said to travel along the Ida or, um, and the Pingala up the central pole of the Shushamna. Uh, this is the process esoterically depicted by the Kadacious symbol of the two antithetical snakes spiraling up a central staff. The Kadacious, the rod of power in India, is a stick of bamboo with seven knots, which represents the spinal column with its seven centers of chakras. Hmm. And here's another picture. It says of a Sumerian god named Marduk with a pine cone in his hand. And on the right is Dionysus, the, uh, the Romans Bacchus carried a um, thyrsus topped with a pine cone. So let me blow this up for you a little bit. Here, the Sumerian god Marduk, you'll see he's holding a pine cone in his hand. Can you make that out right there? See him holding it like, like so, and, and the pine cone is coming out of his hand? And, of course, uh, the picture next to it shows a staff with a pine cone on it. So this has been known throughout history. Like Ecclesiastes says, no one can say, here's something new, there's something new under the sun. This is where these mystery religions and, and, um, and even Freemasonry... Um, uh, they, they disguise the pine cone. Instead of making a pine cone, they make that third eye or that all-seeing eye. And that's what it represents, is the pineal gland. So uh, it says here, all right, even in the natural behaviors of the pine cone has an esoteric meaning. As it ripens, the pine cone slowly opens to release its mature seeds. This process is symbolic of the expansion of consciousness that accompanies the opening of the pineal gland and the awakening of the third eye. The metaphor is a valuable and stimulating mental lesson of an esoteric phenomenon that cannot be otherwise seen or explained since it occurs inside the brain. Okay, here's another picture. Left is a bronze pine cone symbol in a cathedral in Germany. All right, and then here's another, and then it shows another statue of a pine cone in the Piazza Venezia, Italy. So here's a, um, a bronze pine cone in a cathedral. See, what is it doing in a cathedral, a, a, a supposed church, you know? So here it is, like right here. This is the one that's in the cathedral right here. And um, so apparently that's in a cathedral, which is supposed to represent God. Okay. Uh, here we have a picture of Buddha with a third eye. It says here, the third eye between the eyebrows of Buddha, awakening his third eye, permitted Buddha to understand the forces of existence and their manifestation in the chain of causality. So there we've got that third eye right there. This third eye or this pineal gland, this all-seeing eye on the back of your dollar bill, this is all connected. They may be slightly different symbology, but the pineal gland represents uh, the third eye. It, it looks like a pine cone. So when you see the pine cone in Vatican City, it, it's representing that inner divine, that um, awakening of consciousness, that man, that apotheosis of man. Remember I told you what apotheosis meant, man becoming God or divine? The third eye has been called by various names throughout history, including the inner eye, the mind's eye, the eye of the soul, the eye of reason. The portrait of a single eye is in fact an, ar an archetypal image that stretches back many thousands of years. Now we know that. I mean, all of us recognize the eye of Ra, the third eye of illumination. I mean, all of us recognize that, that that's very Egyptian. All right. That's that same eye, guys, that's on the back of your dollar bill. Western occult tradition agrees with ancient Eastern texts affirming that turning the eye inward endows us with a higher consciousness, a deeper understanding of life and death, a newfound ability to control the future. Hmm. Satan's statement, I will be as the most high. 
a sense of peacefulness and bliss. So that's why in yoga, when they say empty your mind, you know, and all that, it's peacefulness and bliss. You know, get in touch with your inner divine, your inner self. Enhance capacity for self-healing. Stress reduction, calmness and clarity, newfound sensitivity. And now we're going to get into the third eye in the Masonic uh, triangle. So even the Masons are heavily, of course, we know into this with that all-seeing eye. In modern times, famous authors, painters, and poets have described the third eye and pineal gland as being nothing less than the lost secret of Freemasonry. In 1918, in his book, The Wonders of the Human Body, Dr. George Washington Carey tells us the all-seeing eye. This is the eye of Freemasonry, the third eye. That's what's on the back of your dollar bill, guys, over that pyramid. And we're going to get into a video about what that pyramid represents. While I am credibly formed that few Masons understand their own symbols, the fact remains that they use them. Dr. George Washington Carey, The Wonders of the Human Body. So he, a doctor is telling you about the pineal gland here. And that this is what Freemasonry considers the third eye. In her fascinating 1924 book, The Mystic Amer Americanism, the obscure American author Grace Morey explained the all-seeing eye, also emblematic of the pineal gland or the pine cone, third eye of the human being, has been found amid the ruins of every civilization upon the globe, thereby attesting the fact of a universal religion over all the earth at some remote period. As we now restore this universal religion, we set the all-seeing eye upon the pyramid. Did you get that? As we now restore this universal religion, we set the all-seeing eye upon the pyramid. So the Vatican, as we know, the War of Revelation 17, with the Pope at its, at its helm, has been working for this, this one world religion. We all know this. I mean, the movement in Jerusalem coming up this month with you know the ecumenical movement bringing everybody together. This is all occult, esoteric, the pineal gland representing the all-seeing eye, not only in Freemasonry, but also in the Vatican. They have the, the court of the pine cone representing that pineal gland, the third eye, the eye of enlightenment, your own divine spark within. Um, it, it can also represent bringing all religions together as one. It says they, that they want to revive this universal religion, and we set the all-seeing eye upon the pyramid. What is on the back of your dollar bill? It comes as no surprise then that the pine cones appear regularly throughout Masonic decoration. A large Masonic design on the side of the Whitehall building in New York Financial District depicts two enormous inter intertwining snakes spiraling up to a pine cone, which is striking to the staff of Osiris. So this is on a the, the Cadacious staff, which looks like that medical symbol that you see, depicting a pine cone or the pineal gland, the third eye, on the Whitehall building in New York City. So when you see these symbols here on buildings when you travel, if you go to Italy and, and go to the Vatican, now you know what the pine cone represents. Why is it there? People probably visit Vatican City all the time and probably never stop to think, what is a big pine cone doing sitting in the middle of Vatican City? What What's going on here? Um, when you go into, um, you know, the catacombs in the Vatican, according to this Humans Are Free website, there's bees, like everywhere, there's bees. And I'm, I'm going to get into that in a minute, like, what do bees have to do with the occult and wisdom? Uh, one more picture, I want to show you the Masonic Lodge in Prague in the 18th century, depicting a third eye and sign of a luminous triangle. So we're all familiar with that symbol. We've seen that a lot. That's what it looks like on the back of our money. Well, let's get into the bees, okay? We've, we've covered the pine cone, and that basically it, it represents the pineal gland. Okay, and that's what's sitting in Vatican City right now. It's very evil, guys. It's very occult, very evil. All right, so now let's get into bees. What in the world do bees have to do with uh, the occult? So on the symbolism of the bee in, in the occult tradition, and I'm getting this, um, this source from uh, polar polarisite.net, so it's www.polarisite.net, and I'll put it up close so you can see it. Hopefully the glare will go away and you can see it. Um, maybe you can't. There's, there's a glare here. Let me, it's polarisite.net, okay? It says, on the symbolism of the bee in occult tradition. Okay, so that's what, either that or you can Google it yourself and type in bees and the occult or bees and the, the occult symbolism. Okay, 
he has a lot here on this website, so I'm going to try and, and skim through as quickly as I can. It says, uh, let me see, let me see here. The bee is more honored than other animals, not because she labors, but because she labors for others. See, the Masons feel like, with the Lucifer being their head, feel like they're, they're laboring for people, that they're doing a good thing by trying to build a one world religion and a one world government. They're laboring for people. So the bee represents this to them. The bee is more honored than other animals, not because she labors, but because she labors for others. Indeed, the bee works unceasingly for the common good of the hive and obeys without question what sometimes appears to be an equitable hierarchy. <laughs> so too does the occultist aim to serve the common good of humanity. He does so in two ways, by first developing himself to be a fit vessel for the spiritual forces that he makes use of in his work, and secondly, by directing those spiritual forces to aid in correcting the imbalances in the knowledge or circumstances of those that come to him for assistance. The trained occultist knows that he is not separate from others, but shares with them a community of consciousness by virtue of their shared humanity. Does this not sound like the one world religion? We, we're, we're all children of God, the Pope says. We're, we're all, um, that all faiths lead to the same God, that we're all part of one consciousness. Let's all come together as one. Coexistence, tolerance. Another occult tradition states that the mysterious figure Melchizedek, who is mentioned in the Bible in connection with giving communion to the patriarch Abraham, is an entity that brought three gifts to earth from the planet Venus, the bee, wheat, and the mineral asbestos. So apparently they associate that with that and in the order of Melchizedek, which is eternal. The bee is also a symbol for wisdom, for it collects pollen from many flowers and turns it into nourishing honey. Um, it says here, as the spiritual alchemists imply, the life of the occult aspirant is his laboratory and his consciousness and his body, the subjects of his spiritual experiments. So the bee represents wisdom to the occultist as well as uh, laboring not just for itself, but for others. And this is what Satan will present the New World Order to look like. You know, the Masons and um, the, the, the papacy, the dynasty of the papacy, we're all working together for a common good. We're all laboring for a common good. Um, it says here, and it goes on and on and on. But the, I'm trying to, you know, summarize this as best I can, but... You know, when I saw the symbolism in the Vatican of these bees, you know, I mean, there, there, there are engravings of bees like everywhere, honeycombs on the ceilings, bees with these cherubs next to them. Um, and then I started to look into that, like, okay, so what, what does that mean in the occult? And because the Lord has opened my eyes to the fact that there is occult symbolism with the Vatican, I started to look into that. And this is what I came up with, the symbolism of the bee and occult tradition. And this is coming from a non-Christian source. So this is not coming from a Christian. This man at the end of his article states that he is an occultist, and he says here, all right, um, he goes on to say, do, do not these things, my friends, describe what you aspire to in your work? What is in your heart? So he's aspiring to these occult views of the bee. So the symbolism of the bee in occult tradition, and you can find bees engraved in various places in the Vatican catacombs. Um, also, again, um, the pineal gland or the pine cone in Vatican City, representing the third eye or the all-seeing eye. So... It's hidden in plain sight, guys. They know that the average person coming to visit them in Vatican City is not going to understand what they're looking at. As a matter of fact, until the Lord began to reveal these things to me a few years ago, I would have gone there and probably been asking myself if I visited Vatican City, what does a pine cone have to do with the Vatican or something godly? See, when, you begin, when the Holy Spirit begins to draw you to look into these things, um, he, he just, you know, you have to put your seatbelt on because it, it, it just goes like a roller coaster. And again, here's the pinecone staff of Osiris in an Egyptian museum in Turin, Italy, with the pinecone again. See how the, the Vatican is in bed with paganism of the earth? Uh, you know, the mother of abominations, marrying herself with the kings of the earth and occultists and, you know, so this video is about beehives and, and bees and the, the, the pinecone and the pineal gland and that third eye.
okay, which is hopefully going to lead me into another video in more depth about the all-seeing eye on the back of the dollar bill and the difference between a right-side-up pyramid and a pyramid that is turned upside down. So we're, we're going to get into that very soon, too. But again, this channel is about Ephesians 5.11, exposing the deeds of darkness. Don't take things as they seem to be. Search things in, out in the scriptures. Prayerfully ask the Lord to keep you awake and aware of what's really going on. Not just so you can focus on the deeds of darkness, but so you can expose them and help others to come out of her. Help others to come out of this darkness and pray for them that they might be saved. Come to know the Lord Jesus Christ is the only name given men by which they must be saved. This is why we're doing this. God bless you and um, thank you uh, for watching today.